they flat out told me that I shouldn't go to college. Um, God's role for women is for us to get married and have children, and we didn't need advanced math. And, and yet God put a lot of math skills into your life and into your heart. Was not math only did he give me those skills, but he called me to use them. Welcome to the Eden Podcast, where we true the verse of Genesis 3.16, and we discover that God didn't curse Eve or Adam or limit woman in any way. Welcome to the Eden Podcast. I'm Bruce C.E. Fleming, Executive Director of the True 316 Foundation, and our website is true316.com. That's T-R-U-316 dot com. And I'm happy to welcome today Christine Johnson. I think I'm going to call her a scientist. Christine, how are you today? I'm doing really well today. Thanks. Good. How are you? I'm great. Great. Welcome aboard. Let me let me introduce you here from your little bio paragraph that I have. Christine Johnson is a senior advanced systems engineer at Honeywell Aerospace Technologies, where she leads various systems, qualification testing, and hardware teams on several commercial aviation products. Christine's a fellow of the American Scientific Affiliation, the ASA. She's the president of the North Star chapter of the ASA and oversees the Christian Women in Science, CWIS, Facebook page. She's on the Industry Advisory Board of the University of Northwestern's Engineering Program, and she's vice president of the Christian Engineering Society. She's also a member of the Society of Women Engineers and... She is a professional face painter. <laughs> I've seen I've seen your work, Christine, and you really are a professional face painter. And someday we'll have to get our grand twins uh, and you together when when you've got the paints in hand. So we're looking forward to finding out more about you that way. So Christine, you um, you've got a story for us for today and and this episode. Can you start out with your faith story? Absolutely. Um, I grew up in a wonderful, godly Christian home. Um, my grandparents were solid Christians and raised my parents in Christian homes. And my parents still to this day are faithful uh, examples to me of what Christian life and love is like. Um, I'm incredibly grateful for my family and my Christian heritage. I've never known a time where Jesus wasn't just part of our home, and uh, I put my faith in him when I was very young, and as I grew and my understanding became more complex and nuanced, I continued to reaffirm my belief. Um, I wouldn't say that I've ever had a period where I completely walked away or rejected Christianity or Jesus, um, though I've had times where I've had questions or doubts or wondered or learn, wanted to learn more. And that has helped me grow and um, somewhat change how I think of things, uh, which I think is a fairly normal thing as a transition from a child to an adult understanding and relationships. Um, but I'm very thankful for my Christian heritage and family. So we we uh, we had a chance to have lunch together before this interview, and uh, we had a good time. We talked a long time and visited a lot. Maybe uh, maybe we can shift to your ministry story. But I'm interested in your. So as an engineer, that means math, right? It does. How how did math play a role in your life as you were growing up? And did you have was it just a straight upward curve, or or how did that turn out for you? Um, well, it turns out I'm. I've always been pretty good at math, I guess. Um, but as I attended a private Christian school for a while, um, my math skills were above their grade levels. And so I ended up skipping a couple years of math. And, um, it, you know, that was a challenge in that I was in classes with kids older than me. And sometimes it made my schedule complicated. Um, but it was the right thing to do. And I'm very thankful my parents advocated that I could move ahead in math when I needed that challenge. Um, and, and this kind of relates to a little bit of what you write about in, in the True 316 um, Foundation. 
uh, some of my teachers were skeptical that I could do that level of math uh, because I was female. I was a girl. And my the highest level of math I took at the Christian school had only boys who were two grades older than me and and me in the class. And my teacher uh, didn't think I should be there. He graded my papers more critically than he did um, the, the boy students, the guys in the class. Um, but I guess I showed him. I did okay. And, and after that, my parents moved me to public school where I could pursue um, higher math classes and take college calculus and that sort of thing. So what... You, this teacher said you were a girl, therefore you weren't supposed to take calculus. Well, right. They flat out told me that I shouldn't go to college. Um, God's role for women is for us to get married and have children, and we didn't need advanced math. And, and yet God put a lot of math skills into your life and into your heart. Was Not math only did he give me those skills, but he called me to use them. Um, on multiple occasions in a very, very clear, though not audio calling, he told me he wanted me to pursue engineering. He wanted me to be involved in conversations on science and faith and use that to serve him in his kingdom. And now you do. And I do. Yeah. That's okay. how he wired me. So, so what does Honeywell have to do with aerospace? I, I'm not... You know, oh, when okay, I grew up, so. my my dad was involved with Honeywell Computers. You know, I, I understood that. Yeah. Well, Honeywell is a big company. There's like 100,000 employees or something like that. And one of our divisions is an aerospace technologies division. And um, we make both military and commercial products. Uh, and I'm mostly on the commercial side of things, working on uh, products for Boeing or Airbus or smaller aircraft. And we design navigation systems and precision approach systems and uh, use a lot of inertial sensors like gyroscopes and accelerometers, as well as integration with GPS and air data inputs to provide heading and attitude outputs that are used by the airplane for many of their systems like the autopilot and the uh, controls, FMS, the, the various systems on aircraft. I don't, I don't know that I understood everything you said, but I, I had a pretty good idea. <laughs> so the plane doesn't get lost. Yeah, right. So my son is involved with uh, a similar thing. He's His pitot tubes was some, one of the things he was working on yeah. for a while. Yeah. Yep. So uh, they, they pitot tubes detect pressure, um, like an air pressure, and the pressure is higher the faster the aircraft is moving. Um, and then you would combine that with a static port, which would... would capture the barometric pressure, which varies with altitude. And from there, you can know the, the airspeed of the aircraft and its altitude. Yeah. So you would know Collins was where he used to work. Yep. We're uh, familiar with Collins. Yeah, yeah. So when we were, we were raising uh, Mark, he was, he was interested in math and we, we had to homeschool for a while and uh, and let him go at his own speed. And he did, he did, yeah. So then he ended up at a school that you ended up with. Now, can you tell us, I, I, and I was reading your bio, it, you talked about the advisory board for the University of Northwestern St. Paul engineering program. What, yes. what, what's that involve? So I did not attend the University of Northwestern. I went to the University of Minnesota for aerospace engineering. Um, but the University of Northwestern has a fairly new engineering program, and they have a board from um, consisting of in industry engineers who provide advisory information on curriculum and direction, and should they add another major, or should, should they add different courses. And so I, I'm on that board, and we meet um, a few times a year to talk about the program and hear the status and um, provide support. And then you're also a member of the Society of Women Engineers. Uh, who are they? Well, SWE is a large, very large organization of uh, women who are engineers. I um, was part of SWE in college, and thankfully Honeywell encouraged us to, to continue being members. So I um, am a member. I've been to a conference. And, um, 
they have a lot of training opportunities and support. And I guess if, if I were ever looking for a different job, that might be a, a path to find another job. Networking, um, being aware of the latest things in the industry, that type of, of organization. So, and of sure. course, there's a lot of opportunities through that organization to learn best practices um, for women who are trying to balance a family and a career or um, looking to break the glass ceiling or um, other types of support for women specifically. So how does this relate to face painting? <laughs> well, um, when I was a poor college student and I needed money, I uh, knew a family from our church that was looking for an employee for their children's entertainment company. And um. Um, I said, okay, uh, I'll do it. And so she hired me and I was sent out to company picnics and birthday parties and um, various different events to do children's entertainment. Um, and I really turned out to be pretty good at the face painting piece of it. And I put that away for a while when I graduated from the University of Minnesota and started working full time. But then once my kids are little and um, we were actually at Como Zoo and saw a face painter. My kids were like, oh, that looks fun. And I'm like, oh, I have face paints in the cupboard. I should grab oh. those. And, and so I restocked my kit and started painting again. And now I have a side business and keeps me um, busy <laughs> with mostly evening and weekend type events. What, what, what's the favorite request or favorite uh, drawing or how do you, how do you do that? Uh, well, unicorns are always popular for girls and Spider-Man is probably the most popular for boys. Um, I am so delighted that right now everyone likes sparkles. So uh, most most kids want glitter all over and I kind of feel like you can never have too much glitter or sparkle <laughs> in your life. So. Yeah. yeah. But I usually offer 65 design choices when I go to events. And so they take about 10 minutes just enjoying what, which one are they going to pick out, right? <laughs> well, um, if it's a fast festival, then I, I'll usually rope in my husband to be my line manager and take money and help the kid make sure the kids pick so they're not spending their time doing that. But yeah. birthday parties are a little more relaxing and the kids can sort of huddle around the big display and figure out what they like and choose choose a design. Yeah. So is this a, is this a hit for churches? How, how would a church use that? Yeah, absolutely. I've done a lot of fall, fall frolics, fall festivals, harvest fest, Halloween alternative, Halloween party, whatever. Yeah, in the fall, they, that's the common. Um, I've done daddy daughter dances, and um, it, when my the church I was attending at the time had the kids musical, and they needed a kid to look like a cactus, so I painted a cactus. cactus. <laughs> Wow, uh, I can't picture that. But that's that's a, a just green, basically a green face with. Uh... Yeah, well, and I did some of the flower, like a flowering cactus. Oh, it was yeah. cute. Yeah, yeah. So... Well, let's shift to your true three sixteen story. What you know? How did you learn about us, and and did, was that helpful to you at all? Oh, absolutely. Um, I learned from through social media, Facebook. I'm involved in a lot of, um, particularly organizations and Facebook pages and groups that are that center on science and faith interaction. Um, but we see a lot of overlap with the science faith conversation and understanding scripture well, which leads into uh, your ministry and helping to understand Genesis 3.16 um, more correctly and interpreting it better. Um, and so we, we kind of see a lot with the Genesis story in the, in the science faith conversation. And that's really important to, to be faithful in our understanding of scripture and consider the original text and context and ancient Near Eastern culture and author's intent. Um, so, so that's been a big part of the science faith conversation, which um, has broadened a bit into um, and to women's roles and understanding um, there's a bare marriage podcast organization too that I really in, enjoy their ministry and 
Um, and I see a lot of parallels but in these kind of conversations mm -hmm. um, where there's um, perhaps a mistranslation understanding that has damaging consequences, but digging deeper and looking at a, a more nuanced understanding can lead to um, freedom, I guess, freedom in understanding women's roles, freedom in pursuing science without a feeling of conflict with faith and with the Bible. So, uh, and, and I've certainly run into conflict um, well in both of those areas myself personally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sheila's a good friend. So uh, we like, we like her bare marriage work. Now she, she started out with a blog called to love honor and um, vacuum. Yes. <laughs> yes. So she started out, but, but you is, you have a blog. So, I noticed that you did a wonderful job. You reviewed the Book of Eden on your, was it a blog that you have or how did that work uh, out? Media, it's medium.com is just a, I don't know, a website that I have an account on and I, I put out book reviews. So I have probably about a hundred on there right now and I've read a lot more books, but I, um, I started writing reviews before putting them on Medium and people kept asking me, hey, I heard you read this book. What do you think? And I kept uh -huh. having to repeat what I thought. And I thought, oh, I should just capture these. So, um, oh, I suppose about two, three years ago, I started capturing them in Medium. And um, as people ask if I have books that I've read and reviewed that I haven't put on there yet, then I, if I have a minute, I'll grab, find my review and put it, put it up there. But I appreciate it. You were, you were very detailed in what you put up there. I think that way, if people go there, they'll get a chance to see. We'll we'll put a link to that in our show notes right. so that people can find find that and your other book reviews as well. Yeah. Right, right. And then in in conjunction with that, I have a whole matrix of books that I recommend. And I used to be part of a podcast, and we had interviewed a lot of the authors of the books. So I have links to the reviews and author interviews. Great. In my book review. Great. It's like a Google Doc. So, well, how would you encourage a, a parents that have a daughter like you that goes to a school and says, you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that? How, how would you encourage Christian parents to, to raise their kids maybe in a, well, like the way your parents raised you? Um, well, I think you need to look at, all parents need to look at the kid's heart and look at each kid is as an individual and um, train up a child in the way they should go. Um, and if a lot of parents have a pretty good feel of what their kids' strengths and weaknesses are and if they need um, more corralling or if they need more freedom or, or what. So I, I would encourage parents to really understand the heart of their kid and guide that heart toward God through the path that makes the most sense for that kid. And, th and then I also think that there is a place to push back against some of the negative and false messages that uh, sometimes pollute Christianity and our understanding of scripture or um, even some Christian approaches to looking at science are, are polluted and um, we need to clear away that, away that pollution and be more um, careful in in looking at the evidence and 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 not making any false claims about the actual evidence that's out there. We don't need to hide what God's done. It's, it's perfectly wonderful to fall in love with creation and all that God's made and how he's done it and follow the evidence where it is. And if we get some things wrong, we'll keep learning and growing there too. Fantastic. Well, we're going to stop for now, but Christine, I want to thank you for giving us an opening to what's going on in your life and how you've been doing things. And we want to keep track with you as you keep going. And uh, we want to, do you have a final word for anybody in the, uh, in the audience today? Absolutely. Um, you know, pursue truth. All truth is God's truth. And if something doesn't ring true, um, it's okay to look into it. God's big enough for our questions and he's big enough for our mistakes. If we start going down the wrong path, we can correct. That's one of the things I really like about science is how self-correcting it is. As you get more evidence and do more testing, it brings us back to um, 
more accurate understanding. So um, keep studying the Bible and what God's made. Thank you very much. You've been listening to Christine Johnson with Honeywell, where she does all kinds of systems, qualification testing, hardware teams, and uh, and more. <laughs> Someday we might see some uh, artwork showing up on airplanes that uh, she got her hands on too. <laughs> we'll see. Thank you so much. You've been listening My to pleasure. you've been listening to the Eden Podcast, and we invite you to keep listening. True 316 Foundation is the home of the Eden Podcast. Join us for $3.16 a month or more. Let's true the verses on the key passages on women and men. Go to true316.com slash partner. True 316 is strengthening and encouraging many, and we're getting stories every day of lives changed through our ministry. We're the home of the Eden Podcast, and we're getting the word out that God didn't curse Eve or Adam, or limit woman in any way. Our volunteer help is wonderful, and we grow stronger with each new true partner who gives to the True 316 Foundation so that we can cover the costs to do the technical work of the Eden Podcast, to coordinate our true school workshops like the two-week Eden Workshop on Genesis 2 and 3, and to make the True 316 Foundation function in its outreach to scholars and students around the world. You can give now with a one-time gift. And better still, you can join now and become a monthly donor. We call our monthly donors our true partners. Please join now by going to true316.com slash partner.